Hello, my good friends. Welcome back to the channel. Always with you, Nisha Fevi, and always you're on the series about learning about side effects in the Jetpack Compose library. In this video, we're going to see another kind of side effects, not kind of side effect, it helps us in the side effect thing. It's called Remember Updated State. Let's get started. All right, so this will require another example. Always I'm having that header and that thing. So we are going to do something a little bit different right now. I'm going to have a column. And in that column, I'm going to have two texts, which are this text. Let me move that text here. So this is a simple UI in which I'm going to demonstrate something. We do have, let me check. This is not the best UI of all time, of course, but to get us working. So we do have hello someone, hello someone. We have something called the color. When we click on the first text, it returns to hello Eunice. And you click on the second text, it make it hello Fuet. Now, this is a thing that is changing. This is a state that is changing. Sorry, let me delete that thing. Don't need it. And also this one. So sometimes you do have this color, this state is triggering the recomposition of other composable. This is a common example, which is the timer example. I'm going to show you why it's called the timer. So basically here we have another function. Let's create a composable function called timer. And we are going to use this here. So it will accept a string called call the caller, set string. And basically, yeah, let me do that. And basically what we are going to do simply are going to assert it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, of course, I'm going to print. I'm going to, okay, the call timer. The reason why I'm calling it timer is because I'm going to include some timer here. So we need some launched effect. So let me just try it as it is right now. And check here in the emulator. If I click someone, Fuad is here. Let me check if the lockout is running correctly. So as you can see here, sometimes you are printing Fuad, exactly. Let me check. Sometimes you are not printing exactly, so it depends if you are printing or not. Okay, as you can see, it is printing and it's fine because it is recomposing since this one is uh, changing. Now, here's the thing. I want to do a timer. So in order to do the timer, I want to use a launch effect and I don't want this to restart. Here's the thing. I don't want this to restart and I will print it after some time. So let's delay. Uh, yeah, let's do delay of Two seconds. So if I run everything, I, I change these things here in order to have better understanding. So in the lockout, you are going to see some from someone, and then you are going to see from the launch effect. This is from the launch effect. Okay. What if I run it immediately and then immediately change it? So I run it. So it will be someone, right? I click on it, make it full add, for example. Let me go to the lockout. You're going to see that in the composable, it changed to full add. But in the launch effect, it's still some. That's the problem of the this launch effect. So when this launch effect takes unit, it won't get restarted. So whatever variable being passed to this launch effect, they will keep the same. Even if it is changed, like we change it before calling it, right? Let me check where we called it. Exactly. We called from the composable someone. This is the initial thing. And then we took that someone and put it here until the delay is completed. Then we changed, like we recomposed this color timer another time with word, but this one didn't change. So we need to keep this state updated to be used within the side effects. That's the thing. We want the variables that are used within this side effect, right? Now here's the thing. Since we are clicking, we are clicking on this. Yeah, it is recomposing as you can see, but this is not relaunching. Why? Because Lash effect will relaunch or restart whenever this unit change and it won't be changing. That's why you won't see this again. But here's the thing. So we want this variable to be updated within the side effect whenever it changes from the outside. For that reason, we need another thing. I'm going to create a val called updated color like that. And this will take something from the remember. Here is our function. Remember updated state. With what? With the caller. Okay? That's basically all you need and you have to keep it here. That's all you need. So this will work fine right now. Let me go back to the caller, delete everything. So before it starts, it is someone, I click on it, or Eunice, and then it will use readable state of Eunice. Yeah, of course, because I must do that. Yeah, relaunched again. You are going to see it is Eunice right now. 
So lock at, so the first composable is someone, of course. So I click on it before working. So this time from the launch, it will be for add because it keeps the last updated variable. Okay, and this is critical. Like this, you will still see this example a lot of time. So here is another example from the library. This is a common example. So here, as you can see, like it reference a value in an effect. This is especially it that shouldn't restart if the value changes. So as you may know, this last effect restarts with one of the key parameter changes. All right. However, in most situations, you might want to capture value in the effect that if you change, you do not want the effect to restart as we have here. So as you can see, we do have on timeout. So this is landing screen. And whenever it's completed timeout of the landing screen, there is a timeout, you are going to run something, okay? Basically, this landing screen will recompose. So we might get different versions of this on timeout. So the first version, and then whenever it recomposes, it will be changing from the color. So we want to keep the last updated version. For that reason, we use this thing. We don't use on timeout directly here. We use it with the remember updated state. As you can see, this will always refer to the latest timeout that landing screen was recomposed with. And like, as we talked about the issue, the launched effect won't change its variable unless it is coming from here. So this remember updated state isn't a side effect itself. It helps update the state for the side effect themselves. So that's basically the, the understanding. And it is pretty simple. It is just remembering value. Let me check. Yeah, exactly. It is just remembering mutable state of something like, that's basically it. You, you could use that, but since like this is an API, you can use it like consistently with your composables. Okay, as you can see, it should be used when parameters of value captured during composition are referenced by a long life lambda or object expression. Recomposition will update the resulting state without recreating that long life lambda. Okay, allowing the object to persist without canceling or resubscribing. So at the end of the day, as you can see, it is just remembering a mutable state of you could use it yourself and update with it. It's not a problem. But to have the consistency, you should use it like that. So I hope you got the idea. So I will explain it for one last time. I hope I'm going to use the right words. So with the side effects that aren't changing at all, like this one with the unit. So the variable inside it, like this one, won't change if it's coming from another composable. So when this color time recompose with another value, the value here isn't going to change from the first value. That's why we need to keep it updated for recomposition. So whenever this recompose, it will give us a new value and that new value we are passing it here. So it will keep always the new update state. That's why we are remembering the updated state. That's basically it. I hope you understood this meaning. Thank you very much for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.